Hey everyone, um, I wanted to come on and explain why it took me a week to get up a video. Uh, a young girl who I was neighbors with her husband and I've known for like six years and she has, well I know the four girls, she had another child, um, total of five girls. Anyway, her mother passed away right out a year ago. And um, I don't know why she didn't get out any sooner. Uh, but she called me about three weeks ago. And I went and picked her up because she didn't want to be in her house by herself. Um, so her mother left her uh, like 61.3 acres of land and a home. Um, but after her mother passed away, in the house, on the couch, her children was put into foster care. Due to, they said that she neglected them, or whatever, because she had left with her husband and went to a friend's house. Now, I don't know how long she was gone for. But she had left the kids with her mother, who at the time was sick. But she said that she was still able to care for the kids. The mother had cancer, but the mother did not die from cancer. She died from a heart attack or a stroke. The mother's husband, the stepfather, was at work when it all took place. The kids had just gotten home from school. Um, thank God the aunt had got there and uh, made the kids go in the bedroom. So they, I don't think they seen their grandmother that way. Uh, sorry about the lighting. One side's dark and one side's light. So anyway, she called me and I went and picked her up. Um, Y'all, she has herself in such a mess. Um, I was thinking it was just the DSS and the, you know, um, the will, uh, the stepfather, um, which this is hereditary land that's been handed down through generations. Um, really has no right to it. Um, the girl was on the land with her mother before she passed, which the daughter never knew. Um, but there was also a will, leaving everything to the daughter. Somehow or another, the stepfather was trying to get around that, and he got himself over the probate court. The uncle found the will later. Probate court's not over yet, um, so I was trying to see if I could get this will to probate court and get her down there to talk to them, because the stepfather is trying to take 50% of what she has. But... So we've been looking into that, trying to research that. At the same time, you know, like I said, her mom passed. The kids got to, we was looking into all that stuff. And then at the same time, she informed me that she had been charged with receiving stolen property. The boyfriend that she had, um, and another boy, and her, she said they was going to get something that some man had given them. Anyway, they drove down to some boat ramp somewhere where the two boys got out and they broke into a vehicle and they stole a gun. Well, they were stopped on the way home. The gun was found in the trunk of the car. The girl was not driving. The boyfriend was. Yet they charged her with receiving stolen goods. Okay. Y'all, I had no clue what kind of a mess everything was going to be. I knew her boyfriend was in jail. Prior to him going to jail, there was another girl, her mother with no legs, and a baby. <clears throat> another couple, God only knows y'all how many people was up in that house. But the yard and the house is totally trashed. Orders don't look this bad. 
there was bags of garbage with maggots on the floor in almost all the rooms. In the living room, it was the ladies' crappy diapers in a bag. There was pissy baby diapers thrown all over the house. Cans, bottles, beer cans, trash just thrown all over the yard. Anyway, I told her that I would try to help her clean it up, but it was going to take a while. Her septic was backed up. Um, anyway, y'all, the house of land was a mess. She was trying to sell some of the stuff to get her some money to get her a car. Anyway, um, she had told me about the reason her boyfriend was in jail was because him and two other guys went down the road to some man's house, robbed him, and the boyfriend, its this is what's in the papers, had tried to cut the man's hands off. I told her, I said, Caitlin, this is not a good boy at all. So, anyway, he was charged with robbery or burglary. I can't say that word, y'all. Sorry. And something else. I don't know if it, I, oh, attempted murder. So, she comes over here with me, and we're working on all this stuff. We're trying to get all her papers, all her stuff back in order. We're trying to sell stuff. We're trying to clean stuff up over there. And then she tells me that this detective called her and wanted to come over to my house to question her. And I said, sure. Well, I thought that it had to do with questioning her about the charge that the boyfriend was charged with. And what he was in jail for. No. Not the case. It was another crime. So. That she was again. In the vehicle. And this was after she was already charged with stolen goods. But y'all on her side. I have to say. The girl's got a mind of like. An eight or nine year old child. Um, mentally, she does not understand, I not, I mean, it's, it's awful, but she does not understand right from wrong. Um, she doesn't understand, no, like, nothing, like, okay, she said that she didn't know where they were going again, because he always told her to mind her own, you know what, business, and a girl, him and her all get in a car, the other girls driving, and they stop the car. And they tell Caitlin to drive up around the block, whatever, and when the other girl, Amy, calls her, to come and get them. Well, something about the brakes on the car. So anyway, she does that. She gets called. She comes back. She picks them up. Gets in the passenger seat. The Amy girl proceeds to take over driving due to the brakes. Um, they get back to the house, and her boyfriend at the time is taking out a TV and a pocketbook, bringing it into the house to show to the other couple that's in the house. Yeah, it's a mess. So they was wanting to question her in that crime. Okay. So she told them what I just told y'all. Well, the detective said that she would be charged with accessory after the fact, most likely. That she would get bond and uh, probably probation because she'd never been in trouble before. Well, he tells her that he's going to call for her to turn herself in on a certain day, which was yesterday. So, we go up there, and the other girl, Amy, who's went in the house. Oh, I didn't tell you the best part. It was a 90-year-old woman, and the girl, and I think her boyfriend, assaulted this 90-year-old woman. Um, so, we get up there anyway, and the detective charges her with first degree burglary. 
I can't pronounce the word, y'all, so you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, no bond for that charge in South Carolina. And it carries a 15-year to life sentence. There is no probation for that charge. Regardless if once she goes to court, the charge gets dropped down, it's still now. I looked it up, and I questioned how she was charged with that. Due to the fact that the old lady testified and ID'd her boyfriend and the other girl. The other girl who held her down. Those two that went into the house. First degree burglary is you have to enter the house. Otherwise, it's accessory before or after the fact or both. So I don't understand where this charge came from. Because one... They pinged her cell phone. So they know that she wasn't in the house. Because the Amy girl called her phone to come back to get him. So she was not in the house. The old lady did not ID her, but did ID the other two. And again, they pinged her cell phone. She was not in the house. So y'all, I don't know how she got charged with this charge. I feel bad for her, but it just keeps piling up, piling up. And I asked her, I said, look. How many other crimes did they commit? Well, I wasn't with them on anything else. I was at home. There was another crime. She was at home babysitting the other girl's baby. I said, but you knew about it. Even if you knew about it after the fact. Even if he didn't tell you anything. You knew about it after the fact. Why did you stay around this guy? I was afraid of him. Anyway, y'all, like I said, this girl has got, unfortunately, her mother always took care of her and the children. Unfortunately, the girl has a really low, low, low mentality. She started dating another guy just a week ago. Y'all, when she was arrested... When she called me from the jailhouse, I don't think she understands the extent of the charge. Because all she mentioned was, will I ever see and talk to Randy again? And I'm thinking to myself, girl, you got a lot more problems than some dude. But she's like a little teenage girl, and all she thinks about is the boy. I feel bad for her because she does not have a mentality. And she does have some distant family members. The only close family member she has is the mother's brother, the uncle, who's the one that gave her the will after he found it. Um, but they're not close. So I was trying to help the girl. So that's why I'm not being on YouTube because I've been extremely busy because I was going to help the girl sell some stuff to get a car, to get a job to clean up the house, to get the kids back, and then all this other crap started piling on top. So, I don't know where we go from here, but as I said, you know, the girl maybe needs an adult care living home. Um, her mentality is extremely low. And like I said, I don't believe she understands the charges. I don't believe she understands what she did wrong, because she kept saying to me, you know, I did nothing wrong, and I kept telling her, well, you know, it's the company that you surrounded yourself with, and even after you knew what they did, you still didn't throw them all out of your house. So, anyway, y'all, I just wanted to let y'all know, plus I have fibromyalgia, it's been acting up real bad probably from stress and um, so if I wasn't down I was helping her out um, so anyway I just want to come on and fill you all in and laugh in the days of Charity's life you know my ex-husband used to call me Mother Teresa 
and I've got about 40 kids running around that calls me mom. Um, I just, you know, I've just been helping people my whole day in life. And it, it's, it's dragged me down, and, but, uh, you know, I just feel like, you know, God keeps putting this stuff in my path, so, I mean, if it wasn't meant to happen, it wouldn't happen. It's not like I'm looking for it. I'm not out looking for it now. It's either calling me or it's knocking on my dang door. Like the homeless couple. And I'll tell you about that story a little bit later. They ain't been around and they ain't here and they ain't coming back here. But at any rate, the videos went kind of long. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing the dump cake video. Hopefully I'll have that up tomorrow. Okay, y'all take care. Have a good night. Hello, everybody. So I wanted to show y'all my friend here. Her name is Rebecca. Hey. She took me out to breakfast. And we've got grits and eggs and hash browns. And I've got a nice, uh, oh, Lord, what the heck they call that Western again? Omelet. Western omelet. Western yeah. omelet. So I wanted to show y'all that uh, I have friends in high places. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and when you can't afford to go to breakfast, I'll take you. You need a friend in high places, and she'll take you. <laughs> yep, we've went a lot of places together, me and her. Yes, I'm certainly. She's taking me on vacations and everything. She's the best friend in the whole world. And the only one I have to boot. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to talk later.